I'm very excited to be here and share with you a little more about the transformation that the Singapore Post has gone through. Uh, before I start with that, let me give you a quick overview about Singapore Post, because I would assume that most of you guys here in the room think that Singapore Post is a newspaper. Um, we're not, we're in even more endangered industry. We're actually in the mail business, so that's, uh, that's, that's the guys that actually deliver your mail. So traditionally, we're the, the, uh, the national postal agency for Singapore Post. Um, and as you guys can imagine, that's not really a very exciting to space uh, to be in. The last time I sent a letter, I can't even quite remember when that was. My wife is still sending out uh, postcards, but that's not really a very good business model to build a, a company on. Um, but unlike in the US, so we've, we've been privatized in 2003. Um, we've been listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. Um, you know, that, that, that enabled us to really kind of be a little more flexible, uh, but that it's at the same time that added a whole lot more pressure um, than being just a, a, um, a government organization. Um, you know, and we were under immense pressure to really diversify the business. Um, so in the last 10 years, we've worked really hard to, to diversify us in mostly three areas. Um, first one is logistics. So we've, we were very fortunate that we were able to set up a logistics network all across Asia Pacific. So you can think of it as a small version of a DHL or FedEx or UPS, just focused on Asia. Um, the second part is financial services. Um, so we, we developed financial services mostly for uh, Asian consumers, remittance services, you can think of it like, like a Western Union for, for, <clears throat> for Asia. And last but not least, e-commerce, is that's the part that I'm taking care of. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do in e-commerce now. Um, so um, what, what we're doing is we, we provide e-commerce as a service. You know, and it took us a long time to actually figure out what can we actually do in e-commerce. And you know, thanks to AWS, I think Teresa mentioned that earlier, um, we were able to literally test out about 10 ideas, uh, try to bring them to market, and we figured out actually it didn't work, uh, scrap it, go again. So we were able to really fail fast without having to invest much. And you know, that enabled us to finally figure out something that actually worked. And this is what you see on the slide now. Um, so this is our e-commerce as a service offer, uh, where we enable retailers and brands to come to Asia, and we can help them uh, go online across all the various countries and regions um, across Asia Pacific. Um, so we now have more than about a thousand clients on the platform already, uh, so that's a huge ramp up for us. We have about 16 logistics centers all the way from the south in Australia and New Zealand uh, to the north in Korea and Japan. Um, and we have four call centers and we support obviously quite a lot of languages. Um, as you guys know, Asia is a rather a fragmented uh, region. It's very, very different uh, cultures all across, the, um, all across the board. And we work with quite a lot of very big organizations too. So some of our customers are, for example, Adidas. Um, if you go to any of the Adidas site in Southeast Asia, that's completely run by us, um, and even developed by us. We run the marketing and everything. Um, or companies like Levi's Phillips that you're pretty familiar with. And then also newer companies like Xiaomi. So that's a, a new mobile phone business that's now just been announced being the third largest phone manufacturer in the world. Um, we've also just worked very closely with the Singapore government uh, to set up a very large e-commerce distribution center in Singapore. Um, you know, and that really enables us to establish Singapore as like an e-commerce hub for Asia um, and then distributes, distribute products from Singapore all across Asia Pacific. To make that a little more tangible, um, here's exactly what we do. So we launch e-commerce sites for brands. Uh, so for example, on the left here, so you see the, um, the Adidas site. Um, we also run the, uh, the Levi's site. So if you go to levis.com.au or levis.co.kr in Korea, for example, um, that's the sites that we actually run. And uh, we've, we've started that about two years ago. We now have about 30 sites live. Um, and we have another six more to go before Christmas, so quite, quite a lot of busy time for us right now. Um, and you know, without AWS, I don't think we would have been able to do that. Um, as Teresa mentioned earlier, I was with HP for a rather long time. It took us a very, very long time to actually set up one site. I mean, that, but that was uh, more than 10 years ago, you know, but uh, now with the innovations that AWS has given us, uh, we've been able to set up more than 30, or 30 by now, and then six more to go um, within less than two years. So very, very good. Uh, progress we've been able to make there. Um, before we started that, you know, it took us a while to figure out what we wanted to do. Uh, we looked at the, the market trends across uh, Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific. And one thing that we've seen, and I think that, uh, that there's actually the same trend here in the US, you know, that on the, on the left you see the marketing cost. You see that that cost per click 
you know, that's how we measure the expense that we spend on marketing has gone up tremendously over the, over the last several years. So the, initially when we started out, you know, we used to, to pay like a, a, minimum, a, a minimum spend on Google. Um, so that was maybe like 10, 20 cents per click. Uh, now that actually has gone up way above a dollar. And uh, some friends in the US here told me now that if you actually bid for the keyword credit card, you spend up to $10. So that's, that's a huge increase. So what that meant is that we would have to get significantly better um, on the marketing side, on our marketing side. And you obviously see that reflected also in the Google stock price. You know, but in Asia, that's slightly different too. It's not just Google. Uh, so we, work, we have to work with Baidu. We have to work with Naver in Korea. Um, in Korea, Google actually only has a market share of like, I think less than 5%. Uh, so it's a rather fragmented um, uh, market across Asia. On the right-hand side, you see the cost for technology. And this is kind of really what what enabled us to actually set up an e-commerce business across Asia. Um, that with the, um, <clears throat> with the development of cloud technology, that cost has gone down significantly. Um, so when I was um, at HP, uh, we invested quite a lot in infrastructure. So we, we, we bought things like called an HP Superdome, uh, which was a computer with 64 CPUs. I think we spent about $2 million for one single one of them. Uh, so that's a huge expense. If I would have brought that to our board, they would have told me, hmm, let's try something else. Um, so it would be very good that we've been able to actually try that out. So thanks to, uh, thanks to AWS for that. We then had one other thing that we've looked at. You know, and this is a typical conversion rate. So anybody here that knows e-commerce will understand this quite well. Uh, but for those of you who don't know quite yet, so usually 100% of the traffic on any, um, on any website actually comes in. You know, and then there's a bounce rate. So immediately people bounce off this and guess this is not quite what I wanted. Um, but then they, they'll try, start to engage. Um, and eventually they'll add something to cart and then they'll check out. So eventually they'll place an order and that's called the conversion rate. And we've done a study across sites in the US, China and Southeast Asia. And what we've seen is that in the US, you know, if a site has about a 5% conversion rate, in China that's only two and a half, in Southeast Asia that's actually one percent. So, so Southeast Asia is still very, very tiny uh, when it actually comes to conversion rates on e-commerce sites. We also then looked at the overall um, online spend as a percentage of retail. And we've seen that in some markets it's fairly high. So Korea, it's about 15%. Um, in the US here, it's about nine. Uh, UK is about 10, China six. And in Southeast Asia, it's only 1%. So it's very, still very, very, very tiny. So for any brand that wanna come to, to Asia Pacific, you know, it's, it's rather challenging to actually justify uh, to set up a business model that would actually be financially viable um, so that they could eventually drive, uh, run a profit and make, uh, build a sustainable business. Um, so what we've developed is then out of that is pretty much that e-commerce as a service so that when you come uh, to Asia, you don't actually have to invest in any of your own infrastructure. So you can use our e-commerce technology, um, our payment systems, our fraud management systems. Uh, fraud is still a very, very big issue across Asia Pacific, so we had to focus on that. Um, you can use our marketing services so we can help you actually drive traffic to the site so you don't have to spend the very high clicks on Google. Um, you can use our customer care and all of these top lines here are actually just pay as you go and they're all built on, on top of AWS. And then on the bottom is more the, the heavy infrastructure. So you can use our warehouses. You've seen the 16 on the map earlier. Um, you can use our delivery and return. So that's one thing that the postal business really brought to the table. You know, the postal business has in the long run been, ver or has in the past always been very, very solid in delivering packages from A to B. So we've been able to build on top of that. Um, and then last but not least, uh, store management. So that's pretty much managing the entire site and the store. Um, so this is kind of what we've built, and now comes the scariest slide here. This is what uh, uh, usually when, when guys actually come to me and tell me, hey, can you explain that to me? Usually I can't. Um, and in addition to that, I'm always scared because if, when I see this kind of slide, I think this must be super, super expensive. Uh, the great thing with AWS, that's actually not the case. Um, so we've, uh, we've actually set up an extremely secure infrastructure on a virtual private cloud. So we haven't been able to go as far as Doc and set up our own region. I wish we would, well, maybe one day we can, um, but it's probably still very, very far in the future. Um, but we've been growing our um, engagement with AWS quite significantly. You see that we now have uh, four, 480 EC2s, um, 64 RDSs, and that's actually up from 106 last year and to, uh, 21 last year. And we, <coughs> We also increased our spend quite a bit, um, which, which is usually maybe not the greatest thing. So we, so we increased our spend 
well, my memory was sixfold, uh, but we actually grew the number of transactions and the actual business that goes to the platform by more than tenfold. Uh, so obviously a very good business case for us. So thanks to the AWS guys for that. Um, a little bit more on what we actually use from, a, from an AWS perspective beside of that. Um, so pretty much all of our infrastructure runs on AWS, but we use a lot of marketing services. So we use a tool called Cytolytics.com um, that works very well for us to analyze all of our SEO traffic on all the sites. So it tracks every keyword that you go into Google and tracks it every day and does it actually fairly inexpensively. Um, and then we use a trusted advisor to literally optimize our infrastructure. Um, when we were asked why AWS, I think the key thing is pretty much test, learn, and innovate so that we can actually test out new things fairly quickly. We can even run uh, bigger brands. So we just launched a very, very big a phone company um, in Asia as a pilot, you know, and as a pilot means we can literally shut it back down after three months if it actually doesn't work. Uh, without AWS, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, the other thing is global, but still local. So we have a very good local team, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank James here. Um, he's been taking care of us very, very well. Thank you, James. Um, and at the same time, enable us to actually grow a global footprint. So, you know, Singapore Post, you think we're just in Singapore, uh, but since we've rolled out the business in Australia, we've rolled out the business in Korea and Japan, uh, we've been able to take the same infrastructure and literally just roll it out without having to have physical people in any of those countries. And we just also launched a pilot in Austria, in Europe with uh, the Austrian Post, and we've just taken what we had in Singapore and moved that to Austria and literally run this as a pilot. Let's see how that goes. I'm very curious about that. Um, and the other reason, obviously, scalability. You see down here, this is a traffic curve of a typical e-commerce site. So every one of these humps is one week. So that's one week of traffic. And then in uh, you know, late November, you get this big spike, which is Black Friday. So that's coming up, I think, uh, in a couple of weeks here. So, um, and usually, I was always very scared of that. Uh, with AWS, I can actually sleep through the nights during those days. Um, and then it goes back up over Christmas. And you know, if you're doing a good job, um, then actually the traffic, even after Christmas, will actually stay up um, if you can actually acquire enough new consumers on the site. So scalability, as you can see here, and if you need a, if you need a ramp up by almost 5x within one day, um, that's almost impossible to do that on traditional infrastructure. And obviously also affordability um, and flexibility, so some very, very important things. Uh, security also a big factor. You know, usually when we work with US organizations, the CIOs are very, very concerned about security. Um, when they see our infrastructure, they usually feel much better. Um, so this, uh, this actually works very well for us also from a marketing perspective. Um, <clears throat> to quick summary, you know, we just uh, announced our quarterly reports um, last week. Um, and you guys think we've actually been able to raise the, uh, raise the profit by 5.5% while actually our domestic mail products has con continued to go down. You know, that's not a big surprise that the mail goes down, but I think we feel very proud that we've actually been able to actually make up for that and actually compensate that uh, with the e-commerce driven business. Um, we've also almost doubled uh, the market cap over the last three years. So I think that's a very good result for us. Um, and our group revenue is now 20% of all the revenue that Singapore Post does is e-commerce related. And I think the, the, the biggest achievement for our customers, we can now literally bring up an entire business and a site in less than three months. The technology portion is actually rather small as that. The biggest chunk is everything from warehousing, bringing in the product, getting approvals for the products in each of the countries and things like that. So the technology part is actually no longer the bottleneck. Now it's actually all the infrastructure that's the bottleneck. So that's something interesting to see. I think 10 years ago, that was just literally the opposite, where it takes forever to develop a site, um, but then the infrastructure and everything else was rather basic. Um, so this is something we're, we're really grateful for. And you know, everything runs on AWS. We're a fairly young uh, company, uh, but literally 100% is running on AWS. Good, thank you.